Hi, this is Julian for Production Expert. I want to talk about use of the arrow keys and their relationship to edit selections and how they can be quite useful when used in combination to deal with a common issue that arises to do with edit window scrolling. So here I've got a saxophone in a, in a jazz track and uh, that's all very nice. I've got insertion follows playback disabled, so when I hit stop, the insertion point returns to where I started the first time. And uh, if I want to make an edit selection, I can use the arrow keys to do that, rather than clicking and dragging with the selector tool, like so. I can press down to mark an in and up to mark an out, and that way I can make edit selections on the fly, which is really useful to be able to actually hear and drop. And then, of course, you can hold shift and fine tune exactly where they fall, which is great. Uh, when you've got that, I mean, if we zoom in a little, uh, by default, the uh, the in of the edit selection stays centered during zoom operations. But if I want to go to the other end, if I hit right, I can center the out of the edit selection. If I hit left, I can center the in. So that way, using those four arrow keys, we've got uh, drop, I think of it in terms of the, a tape head coming down. That's how I remember it's down for in. And uh, the up arrow is out of the edit selection. And uh, left and right will center the left and right, the in and the out of the edit selection accordingly. Great. However, if we think in terms of we've got the blue arrows here, which is split in half, but when we've just got an insertion point, we've just got both halves joined together into this blue timeline selection point. To really see what's going on here, if we unlink the uh, edit and timeline selections and make a timeline selection, we'll see that we've got separate timeline and edit selections. But when they're linked, that's great. And when we've got just an insertion point like that, what we've actually got is we've got an edit selection with a zero length in terms of time, a zero time edit selection. So the in and the out point are on top of each other in the same place. And that's why we've got this playback cursor, this blue arrow up in the timeline indicating exactly where that is. And there we go. And with insertion follows playback, every time I hit stop, it's got that tape machine behavior and the blue arrow indicating where playback will start from updates according to where you finished. Fantastic. So if I let that carry on off the side, we've got this familiar situation where I can no longer see my playback cursor, but I've got a little blue arrow up in the top right telling me uh, on the timeline ruler that... Uh, it's over there, it's in that direction, it's, it's, it's later than the area of the timeline that you're currently viewing. This is where these arrow keystrokes used in combination can be really handy, just because if you're in this situation and you can't see your current playback cursor and you want to center it, if you hit right and down at the same time, the right arrow and the down arrow together, then it'll center it. And if you think about what they're both doing, that makes perfect sense. So there we go. Zoom in a little, we've lost that, it's gone, right and down, and we've centered that uh, playback cursor. So that's how you can use the arrow keys to control, create and access edit selections, but using right and down together, you can use that as a handy combination keystroke to center your playhead.